Skirper Skiboard World Championship is brought to you by Water Ski Magazine, Club Sportswear, and Ski Nautique. Waters Garden Isle, what a lovely location to host our event from today, the 1991 Skirper Skiboard World Championships. Hi everybody, I'm Mike Chamberlain. Say hi to Tony Finn. Tony is the man that invented the ski board, and he's here to tell you what it's all about. Tony, explain the ski board. Well, a ski board is a cross between a surfboard and a water ski. What that means is they're about five feet long, in between 13 and 16 inches wide, and they have foot straps on them. And what that allows you to do behind the boat is simply incredible. It flips, helicopters, all kinds of aerial maneuvers. And by the time the show is over, they may sound foreign to you now, by the time the show is over, you'll have a full understanding of what it's all about. There's a couple of different contests going on here today, at least events. Talk about the two forms of competition here today. Well, the first type of event is the slalom skiboard event, and that's just like a slalom water skiing event. The second type of competition is the freestyle, and that's where the riders really get to show their stuff. We got flips, mute airs, methods, all kinds of unique tricks that are unique to ski boarding. Tony, they literally have come from all around the world to compete here today. Talk about some of the names we'll be calling today. Well, first of all, Eric Perez is definitely back to defend his title, and he's looking better than ever. Craig Llewellyn, who came in second place last year, unfortunately got knocked out of the competition early with an injury. Also, we got the uh, newcomer, real hot newcomer, Darren, they call him the Scud Shapiro. And the reason they call him the Scud is because when he gets air, you don't know where he's going to land. <laughs> he's a missile of nothing else. Any other names we should talk about? Yes, yeah, certainly. We got Chris Coogan, who's a champion snowboarder here. Also, Eric Schmaltz, also a good snowboarder. All those guys are going to be really tough in today's contest. Well, Tony, the scoring is out of our hands. It's in the hands of three judges. And here's what these guys are looking for. Well, the judging is based on uh, three factors, balance, execution and intensity they're awarded 400 points maximum in each of the categories and we base it on, on what we see on the run well the, the judges look for uh you know not only style in the ride but that they perform correctly and that they have some flair in their in their movements we like to make sure that they're clearing the wakes and doing the proper landings and executing the proper form in going through their runs so a skier might not necessarily make all his tricks but gain points for intensity in the, in the movements. Okay, I think we have pretty much set the scene, so let's get it started with a look back at the slalom semifinals, Tony. Thanks, Mike. In the slalom, all the runs are at 25 miles an hour. And here's Eric Schmaltz as he finishes his first run, which was at 60 feet of rope length. And Tony, they will shorten that rope length on his next run. That's right, he can't make his first buoy, he can't make that rail-to-rail -rail transition and wipes out here, Mike. That's going to cost him. And this is Lance Brook, who's about to enter the course right now. Nice clean water, though, good glassy clean conditions. Yeah, nice conditions for Lance, and he made his first pass completely at the 60 feet rope length. But on his second pass, at 53 feet, he couldn't make that rail-to-rail -rail transition and lost it there on that first ball. And this is Jason Bryan now struggling with the rope as he's on his first run. He just had too much slack in the line here, Mike, and the water was a little rough, and he just kind of went right out the front there. And this is Chris Coogan, who has already been successful at 53 feet of rope, so he's down to 47 right now. That's right. You can really see his snowboard style. He is a professional snowboarder, and he does make two buoys at this shorter rope length. And this is Rich Nolan. He had trouble from the get-go, Tony. Yes, Mike, he couldn't make this pass at all. Maybe he had problems since the water's a lot warmer here than it is in his native Seattle, Washington. But still, a very fluid style. He has a real surfing style to his, uh, to his run here. But nonetheless, this is Paul Frazier. What's the story on Paul? Well, Paul already made his pass at 53 feet of rope, and here's his pass at 47 feet of rope. Nice form for Paul. He is the Canadian national keyboard champion, and he just happened to lose it around the third buoy here, but a real nice form for Paul Frazier. And this is his way of saying goodbye. Just kind of a layback. <laughs> he likes that warm water. I guess so, because he's all wet with it right now. Here's the guy that we call the Scud at the top of the show. That's right. This is Darren the Scud Shapiro. He has fantastic form. Look at how low he keeps that force to the way. Just gets the cars right around the buoy, and he is looking sharp out there today, Mike. And Tony, that was the best pass of the day. He was successful at 47 feet of rope. And here he is at 43 feet, a super short line length. And it's very difficult to carve around that buoy, but he is still in first place. And here's Eric Perez, the defending champion. He needed this run just to make it onto the finals. 
That's right, and he was very smooth, like he usually is, and he makes it to the final. So no problem there. They would shorten the rope one more time. With the shorter rope, every move becomes more accentuated, and this time tries to cut that boy a little too close, and he slips flat his way into the water. But he'll do okay. He'll make it on to the final. Let's show you how the semi stacked up. Darren Shapiro is the leader. Paul Frazier, Chris Coogan, and Eric Perez all have a date in the final. We'd like you to stick with us. Still to come on the show, the slalom finals and freestyle. We'll be right back. The River on the island of Kauai for the 1991 Skirper Skiboard World Championships. The slalom finals are just about set. We'll get to that in just a moment. But the freestyle finals are set. Let's find out how the finalists qualified earlier today. And the first guy to take care of business was Rich Nolan. That's right, Rich Nolan had a pretty good run. Nice backside air to start him off, but he actually missed his helicopter, unable to hold on to the rope, and that put him in sixth place. And next up was Jason Bryan. Jason Bryan did a nice run with the Area 180, but he just didn't have quite enough firepower to advance him into the finals. Well, the question remained, would Josh Smith have enough firepower? Well, Josh is an excellent rider, but he missed his handle right here, and that just put him right out of the tournament. Again, you're watching the freestyle, free to use whatever style you want, so says Eric Schmoll. A lot of the tricks are like snowboard and skate tricks and uh, rail grabs and stuff, and I like to put that into what I do, and I think that the styles are a lot different because you can get the water skier style and then you get the more skate and snowboard style into it. Eric certainly knows what he's talking about. He can crank huge backside airs, and here he comes. He actually did a really nice stale fish here, Mike. Really great grab for Eric. That's pretty to watch. And uh, on the lane right now, this would be Chris Coogan out of Bend, Oregon. Chris Coogan's also a great snowboarder. Look at that nose grab he did there, Mike. He has a lot of energy, a lot of excitement out there on the water. And this is Lance Brook kind of pumping up all the spectators on the shoreline. Lance came in third place last year, and this is what he did it with, those flips and incredible aerials. Lance has improved a lot, and he just made a fantastic run and made it into the finals with maneuvers like this spin release. Unbelievable. He's pretty much a showman. You can see him as he went out on that run trying to get the crowd on his side. But look at this. Best in the business, Eric Perez. Eric Perez earned the name Flying Hawaiian for good reason, Mike. Look at this trick, a backflip. He's just incredible out there. Tony, the thing to me is he makes it look so easy. There's a move that he invented called the blender. He comes out of the blender just fine. Yeah, he's the guy to beat. And if you don't believe me, Darren Shapiro will tell you. Well, for freestyle, Eric Perez has been, put a lot of pressure on everybody. He's, uh, he's got one of the best trick runs. I'm going to uh, be as aggressive as I can, putting as many uh, difficult tricks as I can. Um, it's going to take a lot, but uh, I'm going to see if I can do it. Darren's only 18 years old, but he has experience far beyond his years, and he can jump higher than anybody I've ever seen. Well, his only limitations are the rope itself. You can see he puts a lot of creativity into the freestyle routine. Okay, here's the guys who will go on to the finals. Perez, Shapiro, Brook, and Coogan all have a date in the finals. Tony, we're just about set for the slalom finals. Why don't you set the scene and tell us about the four guys we're going to watch? Okay, well, Eric Perez barely squeaked into the finals, and he's going to be up first. Uh, last year, he came in second in the slalom, and it's going to be tough for him to repeat that this year. Then next up, we have Chris Coogan, the snowboarder, followed by uh, Canadian Paul Frazier. And last up, we have the scud, Darren Shapiro, in the slalom. Sounds like a lot of fun, so let's turn our attention out to the Waialua River here on the island of Kauai. Right now, Eric Perez is at that 45 feet rope length. That rope is already shorter than the rope length he qualified to get in the final, so he's going to really have to carve it up nicely. He gets around the first buoy. Notice how he keeps that board really low, and he carves it hard around that second buoy. He's looking good out there. He's always good under pressure. He carves around that third buoy, keeping that angle against the boat wake, and he's got it. Makes all four buoys at that 45 feet pass, Mike. And keep in mind, the shorter the rope, the tighter the turns, and how accentuated all the moves become. This is Chris Coogan weaving his way into the lane right now, Tony. Chris just completed his pass at 50 feet, and this is a very short uh, line length for him. I don't know how he's going to do, but we'll check it out. He's got only 45 feet of rope. I think this will be his personal best if he completes it. Oh, it looks like he went right over that first buoy and right over that second buoy, too. He's really carving it. He's got that snowboard style. It looked to me like he might have went inside that third buoy. Did he make that, Mike? 
I don't know. Tell you the truth, Tony, every turn got a little bit closer to the boy, and he was really put with danger. Here's a good look. Oh, looked to me like he cut a little too thin. I think he was just a little bit inside. We'll have to see what the judges give him, but that was a tough task for Chris. And, Tony, the word is not good for Chris. You can say zero buoys. They say that he missed each and every one of them. Here's Paul Frazier. He's flying. Paul Frazier really keeps that board nice and low. He's the Canadian national champion. As he enters the first gate, he's got the ball number one. He's carving hard. He looks like he's got the second buoy. Nice form there for him. And he's just really trying to keep that board tight, going rail to rail. As he passes that third buoy, he's going to have to crank it to make the fourth one. Oh, I'm not sure if he got it, Mike. Uh, actually, he could have made it if he was Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. If he had just been another three feet longer, he might have been able to stretch it. You can see it coming up right here, Tony. Yeah, on the instant replay, we can check it out. He just definitely needed a couple stretch -o arms there, and he didn't make it around that last buoy. He was giving it everything he had, but he came up literally just a little short as he floats his way now over to the shoreline here at the Kailua River. Eric Perez, Paul Frazier, Chris Kukin have all made their runs, and uh, Perez with the lead, he hit all four of them. And here's Darren. Darren is going to have to make all four buoys to catch Eric Perez. Let's see how he does here. Well, you talk about pressure. He knows what he's got to do. He, there's one under his belt. That's right. Look at how he creeps that board on such an angle there, Mike. He's incredible. He makes the second buoy. He's got the third buoy. You can tell he's got that slalom skiing style. And he carves it around the fourth buoy. And boy, oh boy, he puts some pressure on Eric Perez with that pass. And not only did he make it look easy, Tony, but he did it by a landslide. He still had about a foot between his ski and the actual buoy. That's right, he did a nice run there, and I'm sure he put pressure on Eric Perez. So they both successfully encountered four buoys. We've got ourselves a runoff, Tony, at 43 feet a row. Let's see how Eric can do here. This is an extremely short line length. He's got to keep that board on a nice angle. He carved it hard around the first buoy, and he's just getting that board nice. A little bit of slack there around the second buoy. He makes the third buoy. Boy, does he have composure out there on the slalom course. And I think he made them all. What a run for Eric Perez. Yes, indeed. He is four for four at the 43-foot rope level. Here's a look at it again. He was exactly on target. Sets up nicely. Looks at the next one. He was on this one, Tony. Yeah, he really is. He gets a lot of slack in the rope, but somehow he's able to pull it off. He just keeps that board at a very sharp angle towards the boat and carves around all the buoys, making every single one. But look how tight that last one was, but the judges rule all four successfully encountered by Eric Perez. And yes, indeed, he is the defending champion. And right now, he's got the best seat in the house as he watched Shapiro go out in the lane and make his run at 43 feet. Yeah, here comes Darren. He gets a little bit too much air there. Must be nervous that he's cranked around that first move. He's got some slack. I hope he gets that. Oh, and he... <laughs> Holy moly, he got some air there. He couldn't make that second buoy hold, and he got some severe air time there when he didn't really want it, Mike. Well, Tony, here's where the problem started. Made a hard right-hand turn, caught the edge, tried to come out of it, but could not, and his rear end hit the Wailua River, and he was down and out of it, and Perez would be the benefactor of this runoff. Yeah, at this rope length, it's incredibly short, and you can see his backside just get walloped there by that water, and it looks like Eric Perez wins the slalom. And you know what he's gonna do? He's gonna make a run at the record books at 40 feet, Tony. Yeah, that's right, he needs to get three buoys at this short rope length, and he's got the first buoy, he's carving it for the second buoy, but he's a little bit short, and it looks like the record books are gonna have to wait. At least until next year. You can see Eric trying to set up for that second buoy, wasn't meant to be. There's the final, Perez, Shapiro, Frazier, and Coogan. Well, you know, it's nice to step away from the competition aspect of the sport. And earlier in the week, some of the best in the business went up and strutted their stuff on the Wailua River. World Championships on the island of Kauai, where every picture is a postcard. Tony, I can't lie to you, the slalom portion of the show is fun and it's exciting, but we're about to hit the freestyle. To me, this is a real chance to strut your stuff and tell us about the four finalists. This is going to be fun. 
Well, the first finalist that we're going to see today is Chris Coogan. He's a great snowboarder, and he's been doing all kinds of exciting tricks like methods, mute airs, and really unique tricks. Second up, we'll see Lance Brug. Lance came in third place in the skiboard championships last year, and he's been popping his flips like I've never seen anyone do them before. Then, third up, we've got Darren Shapiro. He's a fair uh, newcomer to the sport, but he's got some outstanding flips and helicopters also. And finally, we got the world champion trying to defend his title, Eric Perez. So it should be real exciting. Buckle up, folks. It's going to be an awful lot of fun. Sit back and enjoy it. The Freestyle Finals. The Freestyle event is judged by three basic criteria. The balance, execution, and intensity of the riders. The five best tricks are scored, and they include helicopters, flips, and the infamous blender. Okay, enough talk. Let's get to it. This is Chris Coogan on his final run of the Freestyle. That's right, here comes Chris Coogan. He's called the Golden Boy. And we'll watch his first trick. He does a nice nose grab there. He carves a nice slalom turn and another grab. He's looking good. He's transferring those snowboard tricks right to the water here. And he cranks another big air. Another frontside air. Looks like he's going to be setting up for a nice big trick here. He's got one more trick left because he's only got five. I don't know what he's going to do. Oh, it's the helicopter, and he makes it look easy out there, Mike. Actually, he pulled off all of his tricks to perfection. No problem out on the course for Kukin here today. Out of Bend, Oregon, you got to believe this water feels warm, and everything was setting up right for this young man. Here's a replay of his best trick. He just set up for that helicopter. Nice, good air, great hand pass. Just hit it perfectly. Got to transfer the rope handle behind your back while you're in midair, and he did that absolutely to perfection. So Coogan's going to get a round of applause. His score, 17.47. As veteran Lance Brook heads out, we asked him if things have changed since last year. By all means, you know, last year was an invitation-only tournament, six or eight guys. Uh, this year, a lot of the, the big companies have got involved because they, they see the, the demand growing for the sport. So a lot of, uh, say, trick skiers and three event skiers have been getting involved. These guys are tough. You know, a lot of them are world-class um, competitors in the three events. It's really good, but there are a lot of new guys out. Okay, and out right now is Lance Brook trying to get all five of those maneuvers and those tricks in this run in freestyle. He's got 30 seconds to do his five maneuvers. That looks like a twister there. Here comes an aerial 180. The board going backwards. Now he turns it back to forwards. He's got three tricks left. He doesn't off the wake. It looks like he's setting up for something big here. Oh, it's a nice helicopter for Lance. And he carves it off the wake. He's known to do flips right at this moment. Let's see if he pulls it up. Yeah, what a flip for Lance, Mike. Unbelievable run for Lance Bruce. It truly was. Oh, my, as he uncoils himself. And uh, he pulled off at least three what I thought were exquisite maneuvers in the freestyle event. A good-looking helicopter. That's yeah. it right there. Wasn't that pretty? But watch how this one sets up for the big maneuver right here. This is a fantastic flip. Gets good height. Nice rotation, and he pulls it off without a problem at all. You see him start pumping with that right hand, a score of 1771 for Lance Brew. And a nice little crowd assembled here. All eyes and binoculars right now are on Darren Shapiro. He's next as he makes his way into his freestyle routine. It's 30 seconds from now. Let's see what the scud's got for us. He starts off with the helicopter. Oh, he almost lights out, but he pulls it off. He's cranking it off that wake. He looks like he's setting up for something huge. Oh, it's a flip, and he nails it. The scud is going off out there, and another flip going backwards. He's really in control here, and he's just cranking those maneuvers. A front flip. Oh, Darren, only 18 years old, just ripping out there. He puts the rope behind his back for a helicopter, and he pulls it off. A fantastic run for Darren. Darren Shapiro, you can see his left hand go up in victory as he jumps off his ski board and he's on to the shore. A flawless routine. He hit every one of those. Forward flips, backward flips, you name it, and he hit it to perfection. And these flips are very high point scoring tricks and huge amounts of air. The judges like to see a lot of air and beautiful landings like Darren just showed us. And some of the competitors and fans coming around to give him a high five. They're happy about this. And after three runs, there are your leaders, Eric Perez, the defending champion hitting the course right now. And he talks about some of the new maneuvers in ski boarding. Gosh, there's quite a few out there. Um, surprisingly, once you think you've hit the limit, you find there's just a larger array of maneuvers coming into play. 
Um, gosh, a maneuver called the blender, which is a wrap helicopter and a flip combination. Just a variation of aerial maneuvers. I think that's where the sport's going is towards the aerial maneuvers more and more as it uh, develops. Here's Eric. He's going to have to really crank out to beat Darren. Oh, and he starts off his run with the flip. He has so much composure out there on the water. He's on the front side. He does another flip. He is just looking like the champion that he really is. He wraps a rope around, and there's the infamous blender. He pulled off the blender. What a hot trick. He's got about 15 seconds left. He's carving it upside the wake, and he does a helicopter hand pass flawlessly. And oh, another flip, and he makes it. What a run for Air Perez, the flying Hawaiian. It was pretty to watch, Tony. He did three flips in his first 15 seconds, but here's the one that paid off his routine, I think. This is the blender. This is a trick he developed. It's a helicopter with the flip, and it is awesome. So Eric Dooley receiving his congratulations on the shoreline right now. You can see his score, and he indeed defended his world championship to perfection. We'll be back to wrap up the Skirper Ski Board World Championship. What we're going to do is send along our congratulations to Eric Perez. What a day for him. He is the undisputed world champion. Shapiro, Brug, and Coogan will round out the top four. Eric Perez, congratulations. They say one of the hardest things to do in all of sports is to defend a title, and you successfully did it here today. Talk about the competition. Well, it was a very treacherous competition out there today. The guys have really gotten a lot better in the last year or so and trying to stay on top of it just took a lot more effort this year than it did last year so there was definitely a lot of competition. Eric, I'm going to ask you to forecast the future of this sport. Where's it heading? Well, um, with the ski boarding, as you saw today, we had a lot of professionals out there doing some amazing things. But the fact uh, that ski boarding is very easy to do looks like a, a bright future for the sport. It's very easy to do so beginners can get up and have a good time on the, on the board. Yeah, that's very important. A sport like bodyboarding is taking off because the people can do it the first time out, and that helps a lot. Congratulations exactly. to Eric. Thanks, and for Tony Finn, I'm Mike Chamberlain. Thanks for joining us from the island of Kauai, and look for us again next year. Bye-bye, everybody. Cast and crew accommodations provided by the Sheridan Coconut Beach Hotel. Aerial cameras.